What's up guys? It's time for another 10 minute challenge. Today we're going to sketch and paint a squirrel and we're going to set that timer and see if we can do it in 10 minutes. For my supplies today, I'm just using two colors to keep it simple. I'm going to use Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna and Daniel Smith Indigo. Those are right here on my palette. I have two silver black velvet round brushes, a size 4 and a size 8. I have, of course, a pencil for doing my sketch water, paper towel for blotting, and my paper today is Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cotton cold press watercolor paper. It is on a block so we don't need to tape it down or stretch it or anything like that. So that's it for supplies. We're keeping it really simple today. Grab your pencil and I've got my timer on my phone right here. Oh man, I don't know if I'm ready for this. And I do have an image pulled up on Pixabay right now of this cute little squirrel. We're going to try to keep it pretty minimal, but we want to capture the essence of the squirrel with its fussy tail. I think that's going to be the most important thing in this image. Okay, guys, are you ready? Make sure all of your supplies are arranged in such a way that you can easily grab them without losing any time. Got my water jar right here. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's hit that timer. Okay, so we're going to start with the sketch. I want to make sure I have about the right size and dimensions laid out. So I'm going to just do an oval shape for the head and another oblong oval shape for the body with an oval inside of that for the hind leg and the two little feet right here. And then for the tail, I'm just drawing a little curve indicating the direction I want to take the paint. The tail is going to be completely paint, so I'm not going to worry too much about drawing details in there. And then I'm just going to quickly tighten up the sketch, add a little nose here. Do the little front paws, which are holding a nut or something like that. And for the eye, we'll just do a round oval shape. Leave a little highlight there. And the two little ears. Oh, <laughs> it's hard trying to sketch something so perfectly in this amount of time. I'm already feeling the pressure of that timer. But just do your best. Make sure you get that fluffy belly. You might tighten your drawing up a little bit from the initial ovals that you sketched on in this portion. And then add the round little back shape like that. I'm going to erase these marks because they're just going to confuse me and I don't actually want those. So I'm going to add the little feet. Okay, sketch is done. Let's go in with paint. All right, I'm going to take my clean water and I'm going to do the tail first because I want to try to nail the timing of this. And I'm just going to take the water and spread it all around the tail way beyond even my pencil marks. We want to do the wet and wet effect to get soft, fuzzy, fluffy tail fur. It remains to be seen how this will turn out. You just never know. Okay, now I'm going to dip into my burnt sienna, grab a ton of juicy paint on there, and then just from the center of the tail, swoosh right through like that. And if it's not spreading enough, you can tip and tilt it a little bit to encourage that paint to flow. The important thing here is to get a soft, super fuzzy, fluffy effect. I'm going to remove some of that paint and just encourage softening even more by pulling it out with the tip of the brush. Pulling the paint away from that center point trying to encourage this spreading out of the paint. I'm going to take even more and just really darken it in the middle. It's going to dry pretty fast, so timing is going to be important with this. And fortunately, we still have almost seven minutes, so we're doing pretty good on time. All right, with that, we'll just let that dry and then continue to take your burnt sienna. I'm going to water it down a little bit more so I have a lighter value. And just paint that across the back. And using the belly side of the brush to cover the ground quickly. And then for the little arms, I see a dark value on the underside of the forearm right here. So I'm going to paint that in wet and dry. Painting wet on dry is a really good way to ensure that you can get your paint on quickly, that it's not going to push and pull all over the place. 
you can color an area in really efficiently with wet and dry. I am slightly adjusting my values as I go just to give it some dimension and shape to help it not feel flat or cartoony. And to create the furry effect on the back of the neck, I'm just using the tip of the brush, pulling the paint out in a fuzzy manner like that. For the belly, I'm using mostly watered down burnt sienna and just painting that in a really light, washy layer. You may end up letting a little bleed happen and that's okay, that'll look pretty. I'll quickly paint the toes. I'm leaving a little bit of white space in between to suggest the tiny claws on those hind feet. All right, five minutes left. Okay, now I'm gonna dip into the indigo for the first time and to begin adding those dark values. These are really gonna help the squirrel pop and stand out on the paper. I'm gonna add a really dark color streak of indigo here where the back meets the tail. Rinsing some of that out. And then I'm gonna spread out the bristles of my brush and add a little bit of fur texture to the hind leg right here. We're gonna to need to save some time for the face, aren't we? So we may need to simplify this a little more than I would usually do. You have to decide <laughs> based on how much time you have left to what level of detail you're gonna take it before switching to your smaller brush and moving to the head. So now I'm gonna to switch to my size four brush and color in the head really quickly just avoiding this little highlight above the eye. Adding darker paint, more pigment, less water on the tips of the ears. And then just leaving little white gaps in between where I want to show some highlights. And then I'm gonna take the tip of that brush and add these fuzzy little details to the tips of the ears. all the while glancing at my reference photo for guidance and trying not to freak out by <laughs> the fact that I only have three minutes left. <laughs> I'm painting in that little muzzle and letting my brush scrape across the surface to pick up texture of the paper. Okay, let's do the eye. I'm gonna dip into pure indigo for this and slow down so I can get these details. I want them to look super cute. So I'm making the eye pretty large. Really ju juicy dark paint here. And then you can use that color to fill in the inner ear to underline the nostril and the mouth shape. And add a couple tiny whiskers if you wish. And then I'm actually not very happy with the shape of the head, so I'm going to fill that out a little bit using my burnt sienna. Just rounding it out. I have two minutes left, so this is really exciting. I can use this opportunity to adjust and tighten my drawing and add any little realistic details that I might like to add. This is so much fun. It's a great way to challenge yourself. Just see if you can do it. Okay, we'll add a little shadow under the belly, a little bit of fur texture. And then we can come back into the tail. We have a little bit of time. So we can use the tip of the brush to add some more streaky burnt sienna, wet on dry details now that that's dry into the tail. And then if you want to add some ground underneath your squirrel, 
You can combine your indigo and burnt sienna to make more of a chocolatey grayish brown. I'm going to darken under the belly one more time. Oh, this is great. I ended up with way more time than I thought I would have for this project. So I can use all that time to add these little details. This definitely went better than I expected. Probably should have spent a little more time on my drawing now that I think about it. <laughs> Couple little touch-ups here and there. And darkening between the little fingers. And that's time. Woo, okay. After that exercise, you can take a big breath. <laughs> There's our finished squirrel. Not bad for 10 minutes. If you guys decide to try this project, of course, I'll leave a link to the image in the description below. Thanks for doing another 10 minute challenge with me and I'll see you in the next video.